the video. Good morning. We welcome you to Abundant Life Fellowship Church in Franklin, Pennsylvania. And I, I welcome you to the service today. I pray that you would receive the word with gladness in Jesus' name. You can open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to read verses 18 and 19. Jesus is talking, and he said, I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You know, we, we, I, I'm nobody, but I know the I am. I know the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and if we will speak in his name and bind the enemy from our lives and loose the, the, the presence of God in our lives, we will see the kingdom of heaven come alive in us. And so, I, you know, as we, as we begin this service today, we, we begin the service with who Jesus is in us. Because as the Holy Spirit lives within us, he is, he is in there, he is moving inside this clay temple, and he wants to come out and reach people, reach people, and plunder hell and populate heaven. Amen? Amen. In Mark chapter 14, verses 60, 61 and 62, <coughs> The high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power in the coming with the clouds of heaven. You know, Jesus remarked and, and said he is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He, he, he admitted it to the disciples first, and he told them, don't tell anybody. You know, if you read, if you read further on in Matthew, you see, he said, don't tell anybody. But, but now he has announced to the high priest, I am the Messiah. You know, he told the disciples, I am the way, the truth and the life and no one will come to the father except by me you know we, we were talking the other day during the prayer meeting and and we talked about this this uh false religion of universalism where it doesn't matter if you are a christian or a buddhist or a muslim or whatever you are that you're going to go to heaven because you you are um, you know everybody everybody is going to go to heaven. Well, that's not true. See, the Bible's very clear. He says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. It doesn't say if you say Confucius is Lord or Buddha is Lord or or um, you know Muhammad is Lord or whoever. It doesn't say that. It says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. It is only through Jesus that you can be saved. It's only through him. And you must accept him as your Lord and Savior. You know, but do you know people that are unhappy with themselves? People that... That, that put themselves down all the time, people that, that uh, you know, they say things, they do things against themselves all the time. You know, it, I mean, you, you stop and think about it, there's millions and millions, probably billions of dollars of, of cosmetics sold every day. And, and I, I have no problem if, if a lady wants to wear cosmetics, uh, God help, bless you. If a man wants to wear them, I guess that's okay too. But, but see, the, the point is, 
people they 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 color their hair they 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 wear colored contact lenses they alter their appearance they they have surgeries to alter their appearance you know and and uh, I mean there's just there's so many things why because people aren't happy with themselves they Jesus said you know, it, it, the the new commandment that he gave to us is love one another and love your neighbor as yourself. But you have to love yourself first. You have to care about yourself before you can love others. And and we we as humans, you know, we're we're told by television, by advertising, by you know magazines, whatever that that we have to look a certain way. We have to be a certain way. We we have to dress a certain way. We, you know, if I was wearing my bib overalls today, you probably wouldn't listen to me because a pastors just don't do that. Well, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's 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 a situation, folks, where where we are. What we look like is dictated to us by Madison Avenue. And, and that is incorrect as far as the Word of God goes because he says that he has, he has changed us into a new creation. In fact, if you, if you study that word where we become as Christians, new creations, we find out that we are a creation that has never been seen on planet Earth before. We are a totally new creature in Christ. And God made you the way that you are because that's how he wants you. You know, the spirit of this world, it, it, it sold us a falsehood. And we have to, you know, I mean, my goodness, you're too heavy. You can't. You can't, you're not cool because you're too heavy. Or you, you don't drive the right car. Or you just can't fit into society. But what happens is we become covetousness. Covetous. You know, we, we begin to, to covet others because we see them in what we consider to be cool. Now I know that's that's an old term, you know. That that's from my era, not not the modern era. But at the same time, you know, people have to be have to, well. You have to be cool, or you're not going to get invited to the party. <coughs> you know. Well, it, 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 that, Exodus chapter twenty in in the new in the uh, Ten Commandments. You know, and the Ten Commandments haven't passed away. I mean, the law has passed away, you know, has been fulfilled by the Lord Jesus, but the Ten Commandments are still the Ten Commandments. And, and in Exodus 20, verse 17, it says, You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. You know, so when you see your neighbor driving driving a new Mercedes and you're driving an old Ford, well, you, you know, hey, come on, I, I gotta, I gotta, you know, spend my life savings and because I gotta keep up with the neighbor, or I, I won't get invited to the party. Well, folks, that's not true. It's not true. You know, you're not careful. You, you begin to look at others and say, if I had what they have. If, if if I looked like they look, you know, and, and and so we we constantly end up in this in this goal to look like everybody else. Well, God didn't create you that way. He created you to be be a a, a completely different from everybody else because you're you. And you're not somebody else. And he, he has taken us and he has fit us, you know, into the body of Christ.
to be a certain part of that body. You know, a few years ago, I, I had my television set to wake me up in the morning. And when I woke up, there was a ministry on TV, and, and, and they would show miracles taking place in services. And I'd lay there, you know, awake, getting ready to get up to go to work. And I'd watch those services, and I'd say, Lord, I want that anointing. Lord, I, I, I want an anointing like that. And then I'd read books by people like Smith Wigglesworth who during his ministry performed many, 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 many miracles. And I'd say, Lord, I want that kind of anointing. I want I want that anointing. And finally God said to me one day, you know, son, don't you want your own anointing? Don't you want to be anointed the, with the anointing that I gave you? And I realized at that point that I was being, I was coveting those other men's anointings when God had given me my own. And God has given you an anointing today. He has, he has put an anointing into you that, that is different from everybody else's. Now, I mean, you know, you may be called as an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. You may be a, a lay person. You may be a Sunday school teacher. You may be a board member. You, you know, you could be most anything, but you have your own anointing. And it's going to be different from everybody else's because God puts you where he wants you. You know, look at Psalm chapter 73. And, and we're going to start with the second verse here in Psalms. Psalm chapter 73, starting with verse 2. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no pangs in the, their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore, his people return here, and waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, How does God know? And is there any knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long I have been plagued and chastened every, every morning. As if I had said I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Surely you set them up in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they're brought to destruction. And is as, if, as in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terror. And as a dream when one awakes. So, Lord, when you awake... You shall despise their image. You know, we have to be what God created us to be. And, and in myself, I, you know, I can do nothing. In myself, I do not have the power to heal a fly. But I tell you today that the I am. The I am, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, lives within me. And as I speak in his name, miracles happen. Because he moves through us. And as you speak in his name, miracles will take place in your life. You will see things happen. You know, Mark chapter 16 says, if you believe, 
these things will 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 follow you. They will they will be in your life. You will cast out devils. You will speak with new tongues. If you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. And if you lay hands on the sick, they will recover. Folks, this is written to every believer. Every person that knows Jesus is Lord <coughs> will be doing the things that God has called us to do simply because He has, has, has given you that ability, that anointing. Your past is your greatest testimony. You say, well, but, but, but Pastor, you don't understand my past. I did this wrong, I did that wrong, I did this, I did that. It does, doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter who you were. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11, it says, Nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed. But you were sanctified. But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. So it doesn't matter what you did. It doesn't matter what you said. It doesn't matter. Now Satan may try to condemn you with it. He may try to t condemn you and say, you know, you're never going to be good enough to, to be a, a servant of God. You're never going to be good enough. That's, that's his thing, you know. It, you know, you're, you're never going to be a good enough preacher. You're never going to be able to, to, to minister the word with power. You're never going to be good enough to do any of that. He's a liar. He's a liar, folks. I'm telling you, he's a liar. He will come to you and tell you, you know, you don't look good enough. You don't, you don't smell good enough. You don't, you don't speak good enough. You know, Oral Roberts... Oral Roberts when he was a young man and, and and for those of you who may not know this Oral Roberts was one of the greatest uh, preachers teachers of of a generation and and, and a healing evangelist he was a, 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 a an equipped minister of the gospel but when he was a young man he stuttered and you know, if you stutter, I mean, you know, it's hard to to preach a sermon if you're stuttering all the time. And he he practiced and he worked. And one time I heard him say that he used to put stones in his in his mouth so that until he learned to speak clearly mm -hmm. and not stutter. And I know I stutter sometimes, and I. I hesitate, but but you know, folks, it, it, that doesn't it doesn't matter because I'm teaching the word of God, I'm teaching the the ministry. I mean, look at look at Job, and Job's one of the oldest books in the Bible, and and in Job the first chapter, there came a day, and starting with verse six. There came a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? In other words, what are you doing here? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there's none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? Have you not made a head? <coughs> and of course the devil said, Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? I'm telling you something, folks. Here's a here's a secret. If you if you will be blameless and upright and fear God and shun evil, God will put a hedge around you. You've blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. So Satan answered the Lord and says, Does Job fear God for nothing? 
But now stretch out your hand and touch all he has, and he'll surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Do not lay a hand on this person, on, on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now, I want you to understand something. This is Old Testament. In fact, this is really Old Testament. And, and this is not after Jesus paid the price to redeem us. This is, this is before the redemption, the, the purchasing back of the world by, by Jesus. This is before that repurchase took place. And, and uh, so, you know, the devil, this, this is the other thing. God didn't do this to Job. Satan did. Satan was the one who went after and, and, and did what he did to Job. It was not God. God had blessed Job. And God will bless you. And when something bad happens to you, you need to understand that it's not God, it's demonic. It is from the devil. And, and so, you know, People say, oh, well, God made me sick to teach me something. You know what I learned about being sick? I don't like it. That's what I learned. I learned that it's not anything that I want to have in my life, to have any sickness, to have any disease, to have any pain. It's not something I like. And I don't think you like it either. But it's not from God. It's from the devil. God will never give you sickness. You know why I know that for a fact? Because he doesn't have any to give you. He can't give you sickness. You can't give something you don't have. That's kind of a side note. You know, I won't charge any extra for that part. But, but folks, we need to understand the devil is the one who, who, who kills, steals, and destroys. It's not God. It's the devil. And, and folks, we have authority over him because it, if you know Jesus, you have authority over all demons, over all devils. That's why, that's why Mark chapter 16 again says, you shall cast out devils. You have authority over them in the name of Jesus. And, and you have the right and the ability to cast them out, to, to throw them away. Amen? Amen. Praise God. In in the second chapter of Job, you know, starting with the first verse, again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? And still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has he will give for his life. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he's in your hand, but spare his life. And he took for himself a potsherd with which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. So, see, when Satan goes to God with his book and says so and so lied, such and such used a curse word or whatever, and, and he's, you know, he, he's keeping track. He's keeping track of, of what you say and what you do. He, he, he's the, the accuser of the brethren. And he is accusing you before God. He's telling God, look at, look at, look at this person he's bad he does this he does that 
You know what happens when God opens the book? All he sees are pages covered with the blood of Jesus. He doesn't see your sin. He doesn't see your mis you know your your misgivings. He doesn't see your your slips and your slides. What he sees is the blood of Jesus. Because you're covered with the blood. And the blood of Jesus has never lost its power. It it has covered all your sin. It has covered all your diseases. It has covered all your sicknesses. It has covered you. Why? Because he shed his blood for you and me. And 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 don't ever let low self-esteem keep you from being all that God created you to be. Don't ever allow your your low self-esteem to keep you from being what God called you to be. You know, I had the opportunity last night to talk to a man and he said, Oh, when I was a young man, I think I was called to be a pastor. And he said, but, but I'm old now, and, and, I, and someday I'm going to have to face God, stand before him, and, and, and explain to him why I didn't do what I did, what I was supposed to do. Well, you know, there was a time in my life when I considered that as well. I, I knew that God had called me to ministry, and I tried to avoid it in, the, you know, every turn. I tried to show God I wasn't good enough to be a preacher. I wasn't good enough to be a pastor. I wasn't good enough to do what God had called me to do. And finally, I gave in and gave up on myself and turned it all over to Jesus. And for 40 years this year, I have been in ministry. I've been able to lead many, many people to Christ. I've seen miracles happen in my ministry. I've seen people change. I've seen I've seen situations change, you know, and, and I can go on. I don't want to brag because it wasn't me. In myself, I'm nothing, but I know the I am. I know who he is, and I know who he is in me. And, and you also, regardless of how you feel about yourself, you have to have the self-esteem and the, the, the impetus to stand up and say, God called me to do this, and I'm going to do it regardless of me. Regardless of what I think. You know, there have been times that God told me to speak a word to somebody, and and I'm thinking to myself, they're going to think I'm crazy. They're they're going to they're going to think I I flat lost it. But and and I've argued with God. I've said I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to say that, Lord. I I don't want to do that. And He says, We'll do it. We'll do it. Well, uh, but I but I don't want to. Doesn't matter what I want, it's what he wants. It's it's what he has to say. It's what he wants to do. And you know, you tell the person that thing that God told you to tell them, and they look at you like, How did you know that? I I mean, I've had people look at me like I grew a second head. You know, and, and they they say, uh, how did you know that, Pastor? How I didn't tell anybody. Well, but God knew, and he wants to set you free. God wants to set you free. He wants you to be free. He wants you to, to, to be what he called you to be. He wants you to know who you are in Christ. He wants you to be able to stand up and say, I refuse to accept failure and and I am going to be a success in Jesus. Amen. 
I mean in Romans chapter 8, verse 16, 17, and 18. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us. See, you need to start believing in yourself. You're a blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled, glory of God-empowered person of the Most High. You are a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are a part of the family of God. You are, you are being raised up to, to bring the gospel, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ to your generation. You are, you are a, 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 you know, you've been paid for by the blood of Jesus. And Satan has no rights in your life. And if he's trying to convince you you're not good enough, you need to know that that means that you're good enough. Amen? I mean, he, everything he says to you is a lie. So if he tells you you're not good enough, God says you are good enough. God loves his children with an everlasting love. And you are one of his children. He loves you with all his heart. <coughs> he considers you special. He considers you anointed. He considers you empowered. He considers you to be the, the person that he designed you to be. Do we make mistakes? Yes. Do Why? Well, we're human. We're still human. But, you know, we, and we do, we make mistakes. We, we falter and we, we hesitate. But I'm telling you today that my God, my God has raised you up to be who you are. Not to be somebody else, to be who you are. I'm never going to be Smith Wigglesworth. But that's okay because God has things for me to do. He had things for, for Brother Wigglesworth to do that, that I'll never do, but at the same time, he'll never do some of the things that I can do. So praise God forever. You just need to start believing in yourself. You're Holy Ghost empowered. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You have the glory of God within you. See, His glory resides in Him. And if He resides in you, then you're, His glory is inside of you. And you need to let it out. Not, not push it down. Let it out. Let the glory of God shine forth upon you. You know, Jesus asked the disciples, he said, Who do men say that I am? And in Matthew chapter 16, verse 14, they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But then he asked him, Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered. Peter answered him and said, You are the Christ the Son of the living God. You are the Messiah. You know, at, at that point then Jesus said to Peter, you, you're blessed. You're blessed because God has revealed this to you. Now this is Peter. He's calling Peter a blessing. He, remember we read this about back, clear back here at the beginning, we read this that that I say to you that you're Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. And I'll give you the keys to the kingdom, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is Peter. 
the man that rebuked the Lord Jesus. The man that fished without his clothes. He was out there fishing naked. I mean, this is the guy that cut off Melchior's ear. This is the guy that returned to his old lifestyle because he thought that his Savior was dead. He was hard. He was brazen. He, he cursed and denied the Lord. But even though Peter did all these things and he knew when he, when he finally realized that he knew the I am I am the truth. I am the way. And no man comes to the Father but by me. When he finally realized who he was in Christ, he walked out down from that upper room full of the Holy Ghost and power, full of the Spirit of God. He walked down from that upper room. He walked out into the street. Thousands and thousands of people gathered on the street because there had been an explosion and a fire in that upper room. He walked out and he began to preach the gospel, the word of God, and 3,000 people got saved. This, this failure, this, this denier, this, this normal man, he was empowered by Holy Spirit and he walked out there and he got a realization of who he was in Christ. And he began to preach, repent, be baptized. Every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And 3,000 people got saved. Folks, when you realize who you are in Christ, who Christ is in you, when you finally get the realization of who you really are in Christ, that you're unique, that, that He wants you just the way you are, you're going to change your world. You're going to bring changes into your world that you can only dream of today. So folks, I say to you, believe and receive who he has called you to be. Because as you believe that, as you receive that, as you accept that, you will be, you will be successful in Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your for your blessing us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for setting us free. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for 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 being who you are in us and making us who we are in you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for covering us with your blood. Thank you for saving us from our sin. Thank you for all these things. And Lord, I pray for every person that hears this message today that you will receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire, and that you will change your world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.